morning. Good morning. And good morning to those on Zoom. We're glad you're here with us. We actually have about five people on today with us. Let us begin with the prayer for the parish. Heavenly Father, as we come together to worship you in this place, we are mindful of the other congregations in our parish who are also coming together to worship you. We pray that we all experience the risen Christ coming to us in word and sacrament. We pray that even though we are in different physical locations, your Holy Spirit would unite us in a shared love for you and a common desire to share your love with those in our communities who are not here with us. We pray that you would remind us that although we are different parts of the body of Christ, we are one in him. Be with us all and bless us as we prepare to worship you and hear of your great love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. from 2 Kings chapter 2. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. 
be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to, to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you, Elisha said. Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And if we could please read responsively Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. God of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the righteous of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. Second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
1985, Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie wrote a song to benefit those hungering, er, who were experiencing hunger in Africa. That song was, of course, We Are, we are the world, world, right? Singers and musicians from every genre of music gathered to record the song and the resulting video, it's a who's who of 1980s music scene. The song raised more than $80 million to feed those in Africa. It was a pivotal moment in saving many lives that were decimated by the years long drought. The pictures coming out of Africa at that time were beyond heart-wrenching. Seeing the impact of malnutrition on children's bodies, mothers too weak to nurse their children, men wrapping and burying bodies. It left everyone feeling helpless. And then the musicians recorded a song. And suddenly, we all knew that we could help by just buying a record. They motivated all of us to do something. And then we have Jesus. He took his most loved disciples to the mountaintop where he was transfigured. His clothes shone whiter than any bleach could make them. Don't get caught up in the shining clothes or Peter's fumbling. What is important about this event is that it reveals who Jesus is. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. His shining attire is just how he appears in all his glory. No wonder the disciples were terrified and Peter couldn't figure out what to say or do. Do you remember what happened to Moses when he had his encounters with God face to face? Right? Moses began to shine and he had to wear a covering over his head. The disciples got a short glimpse of Jesus Christ, Son of God, shining brighter than Moses. I'm sure at that moment they had no idea what was really happening. Peter does sort of fumble around when he offers to build dwellings for Jesus and Elijah and Moses. Maybe he found the experience so overwhelming and awesome and terrifying that he did not want it to end. I mean, no one wants those mountaintop experiences to end, do we? The good things that are happening in our lives, we want them to keep going. The implication of what was happening would not be understood by the disciples until after Jesus' death and resurrection. But the experience does end with a voice from heaven saying, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Moses and Elijah disappear. Jesus and the disciples are left standing there. What a letdown. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so they start down the mountain. And Jesus tells them to say nothing about what has happened. What? Keep my mouth shut about what just happened? Are you crazy? <laughs> I don't know if I could have done that. <laughs> but there was that voice from the heavens saying to listen to Jesus. So the disciples do not say a word. Maybe it's the only time that Peter actually obeys without asking questions. <laughs> what does it mean to you to see Jesus in all his glory. As far as I know, none of us have had such a vision. <laughs> so maybe we need to look at this from a different perspective. What happens in Jesus' life that reveals his glory to us? The resurrection. The resurrection, right? And to get to that point, 
Jesus had to follow through with God's plan for the salvation of the world by being born a human, living a life with all of the pain and suffering that humans experience, be betrayed, killed on a cross, and buried. It is because Jesus obeyed that we have come to know and trust in God's promises. I can't help but look toward the resurrection when I read the transfiguration story, as the transfiguration is a foretaste of what is to come when Jesus returns in all of his glory. It is the precursor of Christ redeeming all the suffering in the world. By Christ defeating death, it means that we have no need to fear death and suffering. It means that all of the sickness and the death and the hurt of this world are consequences of human sin, not punishment from God. It means that Christ knows our pain and loves us so much that he willingly suffered the consequences of human sin himself so that he could conquer it for us. I don't think it's a coincidence that just before the transfiguration, there was a healing story, and then Jesus talking about his death and resurrection. And then right after the transfiguration, Jesus talks about his death and resurrection, and he heals another person. If we are to really listen to Jesus, as that voice from the heavens told us to do, then we cannot ignore Jesus' actions. Because sometimes our actions do speak louder than our words, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, Jesus and those disciples returned to their regular life with all of its suffering. And what does Jesus do? He heals people. Listen to what Jesus is saying with his words and his actions. Be agents of healing and justice. I suppose that's why I like what the musicians did in 1985 when they saw all of that suffering in Africa. I can still see the image of Bruce Springsteen leaning into the microphone and that, you know how he always would get that kind of grimace on his face when he would sing sometimes? There's a choice we're making. <laughs> we're saving our own lives. We'll make a better day, just you and me. The world chose to honor the gift those musicians made by purchasing a song. Let us honor the words of Christ when he told us to love our neighbor, and then he showed us how to do it. So go out, listen to what Jesus has said and done, and be agents of healing. Amen.
please join me, join me in professing our faith using the words the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe, believe in God, 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 the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all creation. We pray for the church, that the transformational powers of God enters the hearts of all people. May its leaders serve as examples of your grace and healing across time and space. We also pray for our pastors, deacons, church musicians, bishops, senate staff, conference deans, vicars, sams, lay leaders, administrators, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. God of grace, receive our prayer. We pray for the creation that we all humbly observe the swirl of the wind and the hearts of the heat of the bright sun. Teach us to honor all you have made and care for the animals, plants, air, and bodies of water of this planet. God of grace, Receive our prayer. We pray for those charged with leadership, lawmaking, governance of our towns, states, and counties, that we will strive for goodness and justice all the days of their lives and calling. We pray for military personnel, Patrick, Matthew, Kyle, John, Matt, Alden, Daniel, and Angela. God of grace. Receive our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and suffering, Especially, guide us to offer hospitality, shelter, and friendship, and care to, care to any in need. God of grace, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation and its ministry in the wider community. May we share the transforming beauty and love of God in ways that honor the dignity of all whom we encounter. God of grace. Receive our prayer. Bless the children we each cherish. God of grace. Receive our prayer. We pray for those celebrating their birthdays this week, including Jeff, Dale, Eric, Callie, Shane, Joseph, Shirley, Cody, Terry. Erica, Greg, and those are our family and friends that they be abundantly blessed with another year of life. God of grace. Receive our prayer. Hear are our prayers, O Lord, that we speak them out loud on our lips or in the sounds of our hearts. God of grace. Receive our prayer. Trusting that all the saints, prophets, and those who die in faith are held in your care. Remember in thanksgiving those who we have died, especially. Grant us your gifts of salvation, and we await your coming again in glory. God of grace. Receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers in the sign of our prayer and the silent prayers of our heart. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with one another.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. All baptized Christians are welcome here at this table. <laughs>
which is bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us in Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.